What's up, Wolverines? Mr. Summers here with our first Friday fun activity. Today we're going to uh, invent a new instrument. And we will also learn about timbre, sound waves, frequency, and overtones. Now at this point you should already watch the curiository video about what makes instruments sound different. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do that now. It's the first in, uh, video in the playlist here. All right. So let's get into this. Our objectives are we're going to understand the terms sound wave, frequency, overtone, and timbre. And number two, we're going to invent a new imaginary instrument. So our essential question here is, when a flute, a clarinet, violin, and a piano all play the same exact note, why do they sound different? So let's start with sound waves. What is a sound wave? Now you can imagine a pond or a lake and dropping a rock or a pebble into the water and the waves rippling out from that point of impact. Those waves are energy in the water, which is making the water go up and down. So a cross section of that would look something like this. Okay, this is a wave up and down, up and down. So just like when an object dropped in a liquid creates waves in that liquid, an instrument or a voice making a sound or anything making a sound creates waves in the air. The air is a lot like water. It's lighter. You can't see it with the with your eye, but there are molecules in that air and those molecules vibrating up and down are what creates sound. So that's a sound wave. Now let's talk about frequency. What is frequency? Okay, so frequency, if you think of the word frequent, it means how often? How frequently does this thing happen? Does it happen every day? Does it happen once a month? That is frequency. So when we talk about frequency in terms of sound waves, what we're talking about is how many times does that wave go up and down per second or per minute, okay? Now, the slower the wave, so th if there are fewer waves per second, that's gonna result in a lower frequency or a lower pitch or a lower note on your instrument. Now, if there are a lot of waves per second, if they go up and down really, 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 really fast, that's gonna result in a higher frequency. Why the person who created this graph put the higher frequency low and the lower frequency high, I have no idea, but uh, you get the idea. So if they're very, very fast, lots and lots of waves up and down per second, you're going to result in a higher frequency, meaning there are more frequent waves, and that's going to give you a higher pitch or a higher note on your instrument. Okay, now we're getting, we're getting that we're almost there. So let's talk now about overtones. So when an instrument, say for example, this violin plays a note, say for example, this G, the second line G, that is not the only note that is produced. That is what's called the fundamental. It's the main note or pitch that we hear, but there are all these other notes that are in the sound that are called overtones because they're tones or sounds and they're over, they're above that fundamental note. Now you can see when this violin plays this G, right? If you look at this graph here, you can see this G is the highest one, right? Look at all these. Now that's gonna be the pitch we hear. We're gonna hear G4, which is that second line G in treble clef. But you can see also all of these other notes are in the sound, just at a lower volume. And those are the overtones. And the volume of each of these notes is what makes a violin sound like a violin. Okay, that's the key. That's the key. So any instrument or voice that plays a given note, there's going to be those overtones there, but they're going to be different volumes in different amounts for each different instrument. And that takes us finally to timbre. It's spelled timbre, but it's pronounced timbre. And timbre is that is the key to this, okay? So 
that is why different instruments sound different when they play the same note, okay? Because it's the amount of those overtones and the volume of those overtones is going to be different for each instrument, resulting in a different overall waveform. You can see here these examples, and that's what's going to give each instrument its characteristic sound or timbre, okay? So let's go back to that essential question. When a flute, clarinet, violin, and piano all play the same note, why do they sound different? And now we can answer that. So even though the frequency is the same, because they're all playing the same note, the presence of each overtone is different for each instrument, resulting in a complex sound wave that gives each instrument its characteristic sound or timbre. All right, time to invent. So now you are going to invent a new imaginary instrument. Your instrument can be in any family. You're gonna draw a picture of your instrument. You do not have to be a good artist. You're gonna give your instrument a name on the picture. You're gonna list three facts or tidbits about your instrument on your picture. And you're gonna draw your instrument's imaginary sound waves. What, does the, what would the sound waves look like when that instrument played a note. Then you're going to upload your picture to the discussion on Schoology. All right, I've gone ahead and given you an example here. So this is what I came up with. It's called the saxophone. It's a combination, obviously, of a saxophone and a trombone. Uh, my three tidbits are it has a saxophone mouthpiece, but it has a trombone slide, and it's very awkward. And here are my saxophone waves. So that's all you got to do. Picture, name, three tidbits, waves, upload to Schoology. You're done. Have a great weekend. See you next time.